Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and today I want to reintroduce to you Pixel Character Maker, a character creation software by Grindalf Games. Available right now, 50% off on Grindalf's itch.io page. It is £2.47. Regularly, it is £4.95, which is, in my opinion, extremely worth it. Now, I have covered this tool on the channel before, but I needed to cover it again because not only has it been given some updates, but RPG developers developer Bakin is now out and I wanted to show you that this is one of the best character creators you could possibly use for RPG developer Bakin. So first let me read off some of the description of what this is. It's a tool for creating character sprite sheets to be used in RPG style games but could be useful in many other game genres as well. It creates the character walk animations in four directions by overlaying many different layers to create a complete character. It has hundreds of sprite sheet layers and the built-in color swapper allows you to change the colors in each sheet giving huge huge diversity in character design. There are various export styles to allow for the needs of most if not all game makers and RPG makers, from 2K all the way up to MV and I'm guessing MZ, Game Boy Studio, and Smile Game Builder have supported export modes, and this should be updated because RPG developer Bakin also has a supported export mode here. You can add new sprite sheets and entirely new sprite collections of any sizes you want as long as the sprite sheets are 3 frames by 4 directions. So we'll go ahead and open up the tool and and this, just as a reminder, was already covered on the channel pretty much in its entirety. It's just today we're going to create a new sprite and then we're going to use that sprite in RPG Developer Bakin. So here we have the file, help, and about. About just tells you that Grindalf and Stripey Tigris are uh, the bomb. The help topics actually contain everything you need to use this program. It covers every aspect of it in a very friendly and graphical way. File menu allows you to make a new character, open a character, that you have saved, save a character, or export a character or layer, otherwise known as a prefab. You see, this is taking several different elements from different sprite sheets and layering them over the top of one another. You can actually create more layers or provide your own that you might make in an art program. But we'll go ahead and click new character. Now we are given two options. Uh, I have a third option here at the top, 1600 by 900. That's from an experiment that I had when I was trying to create thumbnails for my videos using this program. And it technically works, uh, but that's just kind of an extreme example using this software's layering power. I'll go ahead and click 32 by 48. That's the size of the sprite that I would like to have. This does come with preset assets for use with both of the sprite sizes. Now when you click your sprite size, you will be able to see all of the names of the layers on the left hand side. These are more like categories of different elements you can place on your sprite from backpacks to bases, beards, belts, chest plates to ears, extras, eyes, female pants and tops, gloves, hair, hats, helmets, jackets, noses, pants, shirt patterns, shirts, shoes, skirts, suits, and swords. And they are laid out this way more or less because of the layer placement on the character. Uh, generally, you're gonna want to start as close to the top as possible and then work your way down to build your character. But even if you wanted to start in the middle or at the bottom and choose any other category from there and, and build your character in any order you want, you can still change the layers in real time as you're making your character. So it doesn't matter too much, but for now, let's go to the bases. By the way, version 1.2 of this program is out now, and that includes skeleton bases. So now you can make awesome skeleton characters for your games. And that's not all. In the extras folder, we also get special fawn legs, as well as a naga tail. In seconds, I created a beautiful naga queen, and then immediately scrapped her so I could make sands from Undertale. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, I mean... <laughs> So every time you select one of these categories, you'll see everything the category contains here in the next column. And when you mouse over the description of that element, you will get to see a preview right by your cursor. Now this can be pretty small, so we'll go ahead and click the element. And now we can see not only the sprite sheet, but an animated preview of the sprite that we are building in progress. If we want, we can change the viewing animation style. We can just see it walking down, or we can see it standing still facing forward. But I'll go ahead and keep it to where it is walking in all four directions. We have now also populated the list on the right with our selected elements 
element. This is going to be a running list of all of the different layers we have on our sprite. And this is going to end up being everything that we export into a single sprite when we're done. Now we can go ahead and look at the other bases, uh, but those will add layers onto our existing sprite. They're just kind of over the top of one another. So we're going to delete the ones that we don't want by selecting them and going down to the bottom of the screen hitting the X for delete the layer. We can also move the layer up or down. We can change the colors of that layer as mentioned on the itch.io page. Let's get rid of this male base. Today I'm going to make Maria Sexton, who is one of my Final Fantasy XIV OCs. She's my cursed Ravik bard, doomed to roam the land looking for a cure to her ethereal illness. Now we won't be needing any facial hair for her, so we're gonna skip that. We'll go to belts and we'll give her a nice yellow belt. Okay, that doesn't look too yellow in this preview. I'd like to change the color. I'll just click on the color menu. And you can actually change all of the colors that are present in any given layer. Right here, we have two different shades of what look like green to me on my screen. And I'm guessing that's a base color and then like a highlight color. So I'm gonna choose like a base color for the yellow and then a highlight yellow. I'll hit apply, close that. And that's looking a lot better. Now I could select one of these chest plates, but I don't think that fits my character. So we'll select that and then delete that layer. We'll go to ears and see if we can have appropriate ears. Now, while I'm clicking all of these, they actually end up getting added to the layer sheet. So I'll have to delete them. And animal ears three is what I want because she's a Rava. She has bunny ears. We'll change the color of these ears to match her skin tones in just a bit. For extras, we've got capes and Maria does wear a cape. For eyes, Maria has lovely green eyes. Now we've only got blue, brown, and green eyes in two different styles here, but you can change the colors of them to whatever you want. And as mentioned, if you don't like the style of any of these graphics, you can always just import or make your own. Mario wears a long green dress. We don't exactly have a dress, so I'll select the robe. Now I'm gonna stop this animation so I can select which frame I would like to view. I'm actually keeping the animation. I just want her to be walking one direction so I can see her profile, and I'm doing that so I can watch her nose, and I think I've selected a good nose. Not that one though, nose too. By the way, when you select one of these and select a frame, you can actually choose to offset that particular layer. So if there's like a mole or piercing or a tattoo or something that you'd rather have on the left side of a character's face rather than the right, you can use these directional arrows to move it pixel by pixel to that direction. You could potentially use just a few elements to make a ton of different characters this way. All right, this lady needs some hair and she's just about done. We just need to play with some of the colors now. Now, speaking of layers, you can change the layer order as I mentioned, and you might wanna do this if say, like when your character is facing up, this cape should be under her hair, not over it. So I'm gonna select the cape layer and I'm going to make sure to move it up above the long hair layer. And now it correctly displays underneath her hair because her hair is being rendered after the cape. If things don't seem to make sense graphically, just start playing with these settings. And I've given her the red hair that she has in game. Mario's done. We're going to export the character and we need to pick a south, west, east, north configuration to be compatible with Bakin. So here in the export style menu, we will select the frame order and direction order, as well as the mask color and image format. Image format is able to go PNG or bitmap. We're gonna go with ping file. We wanna make sure we click on frame order. We want 213, that's important. And then for mask color, we'll just click that until we see alpha. So with these settings, we'll click export. Now that that's done, I'm just going to drag the completed ping file right onto my map scene. File import has correctly identified it as a 2D sliced animation. It's pretty incredible. We're gonna leave the X slices and Y slices at one. We'll keep the name at Maria. We do need to change the X slice size to 32 because this is a 32 by 48 sprite. And now we can see the gray outlined boxes are around each of the 12 frames of my character. We do need the direction order to match the output of Pixel Character Maker. So we will select the bottom in direction order down, left, right, up. This matches the southwest, east, north direction order. Set the scale to 100%, billboard, yes. Playback loop, let's try back and forth and just hit okay. Now, as you can see, she imports perfectly right onto the map. She changes direction correctly, depending on how we orient the camera. If you want to confirm exactly where she is in your project, you can just go over to resources under master menu on the left hand side of the screen and she'll be listed under the 2D stamps section and also in slice animation. I'd like to make a character out of her now, so I'll go to the database casts menu 
click Add, click on the Slice Animation folder, and then click Maria, add and exit, confirmation window, OK. And there she is. Now I would like to play as her for my test play. So I'm going to hit Apply and then OK. Go to Game Definition. And on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, in the Start Settings menu, click on Hero under Main Cast Operating Cast. Scroll down and click Maria. Add and exit. Apply. OK. And test play. It is I, Maria Sexton. Now her walking animation is actually in play when she is idling, but we can fix that. For now, I have to show you that it's very easy just to walk around, dash around, and jump around using the sprite that we have just imported. Wing, A hoppy rabbit bard. So we really just need to add another motion to our sprite, and to do that, we're going to go back to resources. And under 2D stamps, we're going to click on slice animation. We can specify the different animations used for a given sprite. We're just going to click add motion. Now this will allow us to go into the asset picker and select exactly what sprite sheet we would like to use for her additional motions if we had more than one sprite sheet. So if I had a sprite sheet where she was just idling, I could select that but I'll have to select her existing sprite sheet since I don't have another one. We can go ahead and click that and then click add and exit. We'll get a confirmation window and now she'll have a second animation, which is exactly the same as the first and that might seem kind of pointless, but we can go to the playback method. We can select none and now she will be still. Okay, I've called her walking animation walk with a capital W and I've made sure that it was placed at the beginning, which we can click and drag these animations to change their order. And I've called the idle animation wait with a capital W Let's just click OK. Now because I changed that, I'm going to make sure I go back to the database menu and casts and just go down to my Maria entry and select the graphic for moving again. She's still in the slice animation folder and we'll add an exit. OK, apply, OK. And then I go to my start settings in game definition and make sure I click the select hero and test play and there she is being still. Actually, her animation was sliced as such that when I'm still with her, she has a little bit of a shuffle as she plays through the animations just one time. That's because her sprite sheet has three frames. The best way to correct this would be to go into a, an image editing program and just remove the two walk frames, then drag it right back into Bakken. But directionality and frame order are all correct. If for whatever reason you don't see a graphic after doing this, make sure that you go into database and make sure that your character is listed here. Since I added her to a new project, she's at the very bottom of the cast menu and then go into game definition and make sure that you have the correct hero selected under main cast operating cast in your start settings. I had to go in here and choose Maria from my list of casts. Hit apply and OK and you will see her on the map or you know not not her but whoever you may have made in Pixel Character Maker. All right, I hope this incentivizes you to try out Pixel Character Maker. I really believe that it is the software that has the most potential for RPG developer backing. If not because of the default assets, then because of its very accessible price and its ability to let you import your own assets and create whatever style of character you would like to create. If you've made it this far, then you should also check out Dungeons of Mysteria, a game made in Blitz 3D by Grindalf. It is also on sale, regularly £4.95, it is £2.47. This is a procedurally generated dungeon crawler set in the land of Mysteria. It's kind of brutal and I've played it several times on the channel, but the first person to comment the word dragon in the comments below will receive a free key to this game from me as my way of saying thank you to my viewers and to Grindalf for being a pretty incredible dev. All right, guys, I hope that helps. I'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic rest of your day and bye for now.